If I can be frank with you, if you are not prepared to be yelled at for the next 10 minutes, you should probably just tune out now. I'm kidding, kind of. Can you predict when a post will go viral? What are the best practices in going viral? And what do all viral posts have in common? Today, we answer that through the lens of an online health and fitness professional. I'm Annie Miller and I help coaches build sustainable and data-backed online health and fitness businesses without selling your soul to vanity metrics. There is no way to predict with certainty what will go viral on Instagram. This is why I favor high volume content production. Not what you wanted to hear? I don't care. I just really need you coaches to understand that this is a long game. So I am giving you the truth instead of a five-step equation to go viral overnight. Take it or leave it. High frequency posting equals more opportunity to gain traction, more feedback, and better content. Before we begin, viral is relative. I do think that there are levels to virality. For the sake of this video, getting post interactions of 50% of your current audience number would be considered viral. You'll know what viral is for you in comparison to your normal content. Recently, I gained 6,000 followers on Instagram in a six month period of time. 4,000 of those followers came from primarily one reel, AKA it went viral. The other 2,000 followers trickled in over several carousel posts and reels that performed well, but I wouldn't quite classify as viral. I point this out for most professionals and creator on the app because the latter is most likely. Ideally, you'll be creating content regularly that trickles in new aligned followers for you. And this is called playing the fucking long game. And you need to do it period. But in terms of potentially viral posts, I have a few thoughts. You can't predict it fully, but viral posts specific to the health and fitness industry do have some commonalities. And thus, I encourage you to implement these commonalities, these factors, in all or most of your content if you can. This assumes growth is your goal. The bottom line, viral posts are connective. Relatability, leads to shareability, which leads to high interaction and potential new followers. That relatability comes through so many different avenues and this is where knowing your own tone, your messaging and your creative process is going to be vital. Generally, these can be shared experiences, humor-based oftentimes in the health and fitness industry. This would be something about Bulgarian split squats or not washing your hair because you have to lift that day or having cellulite and muscle. Note these are specific shared experiences within a broad niche. So AKA a specific experience or thought that a lot of people have. The second thing we can have is a shared but unspoken opinion or stance. This can be humor based, but may take a more serious approach or even satire. The latter is saying what a large percentage of people are thinking, but won't say, but they're very willing to get behind, which is what makes it viral. These can tend to be controversial by nature and therefore attract both sides. So expect the haters and the supporters to show up and show out for this type of content. And note, like the viral reel I mentioned earlier, you won't always know that what you're saying is something controversial until the internet lets you know that it is. It me. So let's break it down. This reel got over 300,000 views. Viral, yes, but I have had much higher views with less gain from a business standpoint. So not as many people actually followed me from say a reel that got 500,000 plus views. Viral in terms of high reach means nothing if the reach does not lead to potential ideal clients following you. If you don't know your ideal client, but you want to learn to speak to them, then make sure that you get my free ideal client avatar creator. And if you've got some extra cash, follow it up with getting my Know Your Niche content guide. So I just hosted office hours with my Fitzbros inside my Fitzbro Foundation course. And of course we discussed Instagram reach and gaining followers. All of them said something like, when I post something personal or vulnerable, it gets hella likes. And then I post something that I think is valuable and it completely tanks. Yes, that is because we are on social media. It is social. If that personal content got hella likes, but didn't bring in any new followers, who gives a shit? Please remember what you are focused on. And then secondly, can you weave that personal into the valuable piece of content to make it more connective? Because remember, viral content is connective. If you're a personal brand on IG, you want virality, but you really want what you think that virality will get you. 
more followers, more potential clients in your lead pool. So back to my most recent viral post. I got the idea from successful swipe posts that I had made, 10 truths from 10 years of lifting, 10 truths for women who want to build muscle, etc. This particular reel was 10 fitness truths take them or leave them. It started off with number one, which was RDLs are primarily for the hamstrings. There are better exercises for the glutes. And that's the one that did it. With 329,215 views, it got 16,272 likes, which is 5%, 332 comments, 886 shares, hello shareability, and 1,952 saves. And most importantly, it brought in over 4,000 new followers. In 2023, yes, it can still happen. I want to point something out because numbers give us context. That is why I personally love them so much. That percentage of people who viewed and then followed, it's only 1.2%. Anecdotally, based on my own experience, that's a very normal, maybe even low percentage for any post. That's four people following on a post with 400 likes. Totally reasonable and for me, normal. I say that in order to bring light to your day-to-day -day posts, give them credit. Because frankly, in order to hit those viral on niche posts, you need your day-to-day -day content as well. Let us go over a few other well-performing posts that I have made that consistently led to hundreds of new followers, a slow but respectable trickle without virality. All of these posts, were 30 to 90 seconds long. I feel like people get so caught up in the weeds of box checking that they forget to just create content that you want to create. You have a thought or experience related to your audience, create it. That has more potential for virality and shareability than posting a fucking textbook of a post on Instagram anyway. So back to the examples of that day-to-day -day content that performed well and was educational plus relatable, but not viral. The first one was the follow-up reel, explaining why the RDL is better for the hamstrings than the glutes and why other exercises are best for the glutes. That brought in an additional 90 followers from only 22,000 views. Another one was a reel about three exercises that the Fitzbo girlies get right. That brought in 230 new followers from only 29,000 views. So note that that is even a better percentage, like a conversion rate than my follow-up reel. And the last one we will go over is a programming reel about strength versus versus hypertrophy, and that brought in 143 new followers with just 22,000 views. This video had lower likes, nearly half that of the other two reels that I just mentioned, but it had 210 saves. That is great from a business standpoint because this is a very specific reel to what I teach inside my peer programming course. So it was a very niche post. All three of those were in that 20 to 30K view mark, but what's most important is the increase in followers. From those three reels, I got nearly 500 new followers. So don't sleep on your day-to-day -day content and longer form content if that is what makes sense for you. Fuck the trending audio, fuck the checking boxes for a bit, and please fuck the seven second rule. I don't know who came up with that. If you need longer, great, then take longer. Just make sure that maybe you have a really good hook in the first three to seven seconds, and then go on to your nuanced post. Focus on your ideal client, and relating to them. For example, one of my Fitzbros mentioned that her best performing piece of content, a reel, is always her working out in winter clothes in her garage because she has no heat. Right, great, love that. It's real and it's raw and it's relatable. Valuable, not from an educational standpoint, but from a human standpoint, and it's still related to her niche of lifting weights. So now we asked, what is it about that post that made it relatable and how can you spin that in seven different ways. Make a video or a swipe graphic of your era. So that would look like in my seven layer lifting era. Make an empowering statement about not needing to be in the latest matching Lululemon set to get your workout in. Come as you are vibes. These types of posts are again, connective and will get more eyes on her account. Then once people buy in, we can sprinkle in that educational content for our warmer audience because they are closer to purchasing from us. Yes, the perfect scenario for those of us with knowledge as a core value is when a truly valuable and educational piece of content goes viral, but depending on and putting all of your weight in the hopes of that happening is not the way to go viral. What has been your most viral piece of content? Drop it down below in the comments. Just some takeaways to end the video. 
When you create content, please try to let go of making it quick so that under seven seconds, having to use trending audio or checking most boxes. And I say most because I do think there are helpful traction tools like clarity or curiosity in the first three seconds. It has to be sticky, but create content that is relatable and shareable above all else and connect to your niche. This is how you get what you're really wanting out of going viral. Again, very hard to do if you don't know who your ideal client is or what your niche is. So be sure to check out my freebie and the paid offer, which is the Know Your Niche Content Guide if you need help with that. And I know this video was a little bit spicy, but if you enjoyed these educated gains, be sure to subscribe because I do drop content every Tuesday. Bye.